Finding Tranquility Base, the location of the first man landing on the moon, is a lot easier today than it proved to be following the historic touchdown in July 1969. As Apollo 11's lunar module descended to the surface, Michael Collins in the command module followed its progress through the spacecraft's sextant until it was roughly 115 miles from touchdown. Collins would later write, I watched Eagle grow smaller and smaller until finally I lost sight of it amid the craters. His choice of the word lost is appropriate because once the lunar module touched down, nobody knew precisely where it was. The main aim of the first landing attempt was just to get the spacecraft down safely, so no predetermined landing spot was chosen. They were instead allocated a landing zone to aim for. This landing zone took the shape of an ellipse as shown in this diagram and the idea was to aim for the centre of the ellipse which corresponds to the area marked on this diagram. If you note the small bright crater just southwest of the centre point with the two dark older craters to its right, this is your reference for the next image. This is a photograph of that area with the centre point marked. The ideal landing zone was just north of the centre of the ellipse in this relatively flat land. And to this end, NASA created a replica of this area at Cinder Lakes in Flagstaff, Arizona. In the event, the landing path that the lunar module was on took them further south than intended, as seen in this diagram. The track they actually took is shown by the black line, and the height above the surface at this point can be seen in this frame from the landing footage. The large crater, seen at lower right in this frame, is indicated by the red arrow here. So at the point when they should have been touching down, they were in fact further south and still at a high altitude. As they descended, Armstrong could tell from the landmarks they were passing over that they would be off course and eventually they would land about three to four miles downrange, as seen in this image. The planned landing zone can be seen to the right and the actual location can be seen on the left. Looking out of the Apollo 11 lunar module's windows, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin took in the magnificent view before them. They were the first humans to ever gaze out over the dusty and desolate lunar landscape. For the lunar crew it was an alien world, and not just because it was so far removed from the Earth. It had been hoped that after studying maps and photographs of the local terrain, the lunar crew would be able to locate their position. But now they were there, they couldn't recognise anything. Armstrong reported back to the Earth. The guys that said that uh, we wouldn't be able to tell precisely where we are are the winners today. Collins, up in the command module, would have liked to have known their location on the moon to give him as much information as possible when it came time for the ascent stage to lift off. In an effort to try and locate the lunar module, the ground read up sextant targets for Collins to check out, as seen in this diagram but at this point their location was sketchy. Collins would ask, Do you have any idea whether they landed left or right of center line? Just, just a little bit long, is that all we know? Apparently that's about all we can tell, over. Okay, thank you. Collins described the search for Eagle in one of his books. For the next couple of orbits, I tried very hard to spot Eagle through my sextant, but I was unable to find it. The problem was that no one knew exactly where Neil landed. The first observation attempt did in fact include the lunar module, but with little time to look during each pass over the landing area, and with a narrow field of view through the sextant, it was always going to be a difficult task. Only towards the end of Eagle's stay on the surface did the ground have any idea of their location, after tracking the orbiting spacecraft with the radar of the lunar module. Collins would mark this location on his map and as can be seen here, the final sextant target was only out by about 750 feet, but Collins was too preoccupied with the upcoming lunar module liftoff to look for them. To locate Eagle on the moon, you need to find the Sea of Tranquility, a large lava filled area on the eastern side of the moon, just right of centre, as viewed from the Earth in the northern hemisphere. If you imagine this region as a rectangle, then the landing site is located in the bottom left hand corner. Mount Marilyn, the triangular feature named by James Lovell after his wife, can be seen on the right hand side of this image, just below center. Following a horizontal line westward from this feature, the large crater Maskelyne can be seen. 
This is the path that Eagle took during its descent. This path across the Sea of Tranquility can be observed in this set of photographs from Apollo 10. Closing in on the western edge, there are two craters with illuminated floors called Ritter on the left and Sabine just below and on the right. Both craters are roughly 19 miles across. To the right of these craters, in the bottom right hand corner, is the very bright crater called Moltke, which is about 4 miles across. This crater sits above a rill, named US-1 by the astronauts, that runs from the bottom right hand corner back upwards towards the south of the crater Sabine. Below Ritter can be seen the 6.8 mile diameter Schmidt crater, which was captured in this Apollo 10 photograph. The crater Molke, with its ejector blanket, stands out against the grey of the lava floor and was captured by the Apollo 10 crew in this photograph. To the northwest of this crater lies two distinctive features, named after their appearances. On the left there is the Cat's Paw, and to its right lies several craters that were called the Z, and it is between these two landmarks that the Apollo 11 landing site can be found. Just visible, in the centre of this image, lies the 540 foot wide crater called West Crater. Coming into land, Armstrong could see West Crater and noted that the lunar module was targeted for its northern rim. Upon seeing the treacherous terrain that lay ahead, Armstrong decided to proceed onwards and land just to the west of its smaller neighbour. Eagle's descent stage can be seen about 196 feet to the left of Little West Crater. During the descent, this is the 80 foot wide crater that Armstrong had to fly over to find a safe spot to touch down and later during the moonwalk he covered the distance between the lunar module and Little West Crater and took several photographs from its southwestern rim. Nowadays it is known precisely where Eagle landed with numerous spacecraft returning images of the landing site. Eagle's descent stage now sits silently amongst the multi-million dollar remains of humankind's first step out into the universe at Tranquility Base. I hope you have enjoyed this video and it would be great if you hit the subscribe button and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Roger Twink, Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot.